our universe. There's no place like home, eh? I hate to break out the idioms at a time like this, a time of great crisis and multiversal unrest, aka all the freaking time since the universe was born out of imperfection, thrives in perfect imperfection, which is admittedly a really corny term. But enough of that. Hey plebs, I'm Swaydash, and nothing is sacred. Nothing. I'd like to talk about two things primarily today, comics and Pokemon. And I'd like to explain how those two things tie together using the idea of the multiverse. Got your sunglasses? Good. Because we're going to go... Cosmic. No, the sun is actually pretty bright. Do you seriously want to go blind? Yeah, that's what I thought, you fucking turd brain. Sheesh, some people. So, multiverse theory. You could just go on Wikipedia and read all about it like the gay little nerd that you are, but it's essentially just the idea that there exist an infinite number of parallel universes, and that they all come together to form this one cohesive multiverse. Now, I've read enough comics to know that the multiverse theory plays a huge role in Marvel and DC, especially since both companies have multiverse scale events coming out next year that actually revolve around almost the same premise. Hypercrisis believers, eat your hearts out. Don't. That's gross. The multiverse plays an even bigger role in DC, as each of the 51 alternate universes that exist in the multiverse are just variations on Earth Prime slash Earth Zero. And since the latter is like a nodal point for multiversal vibrations, or alignment rather, destroying it would destroy the multiverse end off. That's why Earth Prime is so vulnerable to attacks from the likes of Darkseed and the Anti-Monitor, but it has a condom, or contraceptive pill of sorts, your choice, protecting it. The Justice League, zzz, and just superheroes in general on Earth Prime do a pretty good job of keeping things in check. Oh shit, I almost forgot. We're talking about the New 52 multiverse here, so get your Rip Hunter 52 bullshit and your pre-Crisis on Infinite Earths bullshit out of here. We don't appreciate heretics polluting the minds of our youth, thank you very much. If we're going to go by that same contraceptives logic I just utilised earlier, then Earth 2 is a prime, no pun intended, example of a universe that forgot to wear a condom. Just look at that place, it's like a torture orgy. A torgy. Earth 2 is rife with darkseed sperm. Omega spunk? Anti-life insemination? Ha! That last one was pretty well done. Props to me. Oh wait, did you hear that? That's the sound of bitches lining up to get some of this. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Some of this. Forget all that DC mumbo jumbo. Just remember that if the Prime Earth that all the other alternate universes are variations upon ceases to exist, then the other alternate universes would theoretically have never existed. So really, if there's an alternate universe out there in which JFK didn't get assassinated, but someone went back in time in our Prime Universe... If we even are the Prime Universe, that's hella nihilistic, man. But that's relativity for you folks. ...and erased him from existence, which however unlikely it may seem is always a possibility, then that alternate universe and all the sub-alternate universe spanning out of his assassination would never have existed in the resulting prime timeline we may experience. At a point like that with major historical impact, you will get a fucked on a fractured timeline diverging from said point. In other words, the consequences of such an action would be far-reaching, but that's oversimplifying it a tad. Okay, a lot. That is a huge oversimplification. But my point still stands. Kinda. It makes less and less sense the more I ponder on the subject. To any egotistical fags out there, you'd be pleased to know that you're all gods yourselves, in a certain light. For every action that we take will always result in the birth of new universes. Say, you should really take a dump. If you went and took a dump right now, no biggie, what's done is done. But you really shouldn't be such a pushover to be listening to some loony like me. However, in an alternate universe, you had the nerve to challenge my suggestion, and hence you didn't take the most glorious stump in the cosmos. Your loss 
but no matter how small the choice, it will always have resounding consequences in a fucked up collateral damage kind of way. You could say it's a little like making a mountain out of a molehill, but in this case you're causing unfathomable destruction by keeping some poop in your ass. But if you let it slide, out of your ass that is, you'll still incur in said disruptions. Now tell me, just how does it feel? being that damn dangerous? Pretty pointless, right? I mean, if I'm such a divine being... Why can't I make the pain go away? Now, you, yes, you, the sentient being behind that screen, can take a sigh of relief because we shall soon be delving into how this ties into my belief that multiverse theory is canon in the Pokemon universe too. So, back during the Heart Gold and Soul Silver days, there was an event in the game wherein, by taking an Arceus with you to the ruins of Alf, you could end up teleporting to an area between Johto and Sinnoh, since the events of Heart Gold and Diamond coincide, and Arceus literally creates one of the Creation Trio legendaries while showing the character images off. Our world. Yes, that's right. Your world. My world. It's Tadaki's world. This fudging planet. Photos of it. Photos of our cosmos. What does that prove? I mean, surely those could just be images of the Heart Gold Soul Silver universe, right? Nope. It's already established that the uh, Soul World Wide Web in Pokémon exists within a network of personal computers, and it's ridiculously primitive. It has a very, very, very... Words cannot stress how very outdated the mailing system is, and it has a personal, albeit client side, storage system for Pokemon. It doesn't have any Google, and it sure as hell doesn't have any Bong or Bing, for that matter, so therefore Arceus couldn't have just pulled those images off of Google Images. There you go. Well, the photos we see are clearly photos of places within our universe, courtesy of Getty Images All Rights Reserved, so that immediately takes away any suspension of disbelief that would state otherwise. Now Arceus is the god lama of the Pokemon world, but various religions, i.e. Hinduism, with multiple deities state that these gods are simply geysers of a single celestial body, so this could therefore apply to Arceus as well. By that same token, Ganesh, the uh, elephant god, is Arceus, who is in turn Jehovah, who is this hypothetical nameless creator who fueled the Big Bang and beginning of ages. Another interesting notion to contemplate. The screen separating the game and us is very much like the bleed in comic books, an alarmingly thin sheet of a barely noticeable material that can only be perceived in its true form from one side, like a one-sided mirror. To think that something so fragile is all that separates two expanses of physical and digital space is a scary notion. The protagonist in Heart Gold and Soul Silver is privy to otherworldly visions when you take that onto account, of course, but are they, is the question. Notice how the player responds only to our commands, though. It's up to us to determine the outcome of, say, a battle. But the protagonist, who is perpetually silent, which is interesting, would observe this as their own actions. Now, if they're being controlled by an outside force, but they aren't aware of it, but we're subconsciously and simultaneously, even, projecting ourselves onto these characters and playing as them, then does that mean that they're alternate universe versions of ourselves, or are they just lifeless vessels that we end up subconsciously inhabiting? Uh, kind of like the Na'vi bodies and Avatar. Can we consciously be in two places at once? I won't answer that. I had contemplated the idea that the Pokemon multiverse is a self-contained pocket multiverse, but that can't be right, since a multiverse by theory connects to everything, period. I'm retroactively correcting my own fallacies here, since the Pokemon multiverse therefore equates to our own multiverse, as do the DC and Marvel multiverses, so our actions have impact on all of their multiverses too. It's true. We influence the hero or heroine's actions in Pokemon games, and as an example, it was humans from this universe, it was readers who decided the fate of Jason Todd the second Robin in the uh, post-crisis Batman story. Death in the family. Yes, it was. Well, it was decided by a poll system, but it was humans from this universe who decided the outcome of events on that Earth. There you go, evidence for my claim. Let's get back to Pokemon. Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire came out recently, 
and they contain more evidence of multiverse theory being canonically accepted. There's a character in that set of games called Zinnia, and she tells you that she's been observing a world like that of the main timeline, but with noticeable differences. She's directly referencing the timeline of Ruby and Sapphire, since she explicitly states that Mega Pokemon and the Kalos War never happened in said Earth's timeline, but that it could still be threatened by a meteorite like the main timeline, Hoenn. Using the DC school of thought, the main timeline, so Fire Red, Heart Gold, Omega Ruby, Diamond, Black, Black 2 and X, is Earth Prime, and the original timeline, so Red, Gold, Ruby, Diamond, Black, Black 2 and either no X or an alternate version of X without Mega Revolution, and the AZ subplot is Earth 2. If we want to flesh out the multiverse even more, we could say that the Pokemon anime universe featuring Ash and Friends is Earth 3. Now Ash has come across adversaries and events from the games in altered forms, and he most recently came across Mega Rayquaza, who had a hand in the rise of Mega Evolution on Earth Prime, and might or might not exist as a multiversal constant of some kind, kind of like how Apocalypse and New Genesis exist outside the actual um, multiverse in DC. Now the reason I mention the anime universe is because that's probably the most popular Pokemon universe outside of the games, but that's beside the point. Ash could be connected to Earth Prime, but that's all up to Game Freak to confirm or not. They probably won't do shit with these ideas, but it's nice to know that they're acknowledged by somebody, right? The Pokemon multiverse is infinitely big, and we haven't even begun to try to classify universes like the Pokemon Special Anime, the TCG video game universe, the various manga universes including, but not limited to, Pokemon Adventures, and the list goes on, my friends. Our only limitations are the feeble minds we have. However, even though Pokemon is merely fiction in our reality, simply being fiction doesn't mean it's not real. The fact that people have put creative effort into making these thoughts more than just thoughts means that they're more than real. So by that logic, there is no such thing as fiction. And you know what? I would say that this whole argument supports that preposterous claim. As a final point, when you transfer Pokemon from Generation 3 to Generation 6, which is some serious dedication right there, it says that said Pokemon, it says on their status screens at least, it says that they've been transferred through space and time. Now, if they existed in the main timeline, the main universe, the Prime Universe, there would be no reason to mention that. Which means they must have travelled through something, I don't know, a wormhole of some kind, to reach the main universe, so their alternate universe Pokemon. There you go, folks. Objective, irrefutable evidence. I highly doubt you've got shit on that. Well... I have no idea what drugs I've been taking, but that was an enlightening experience for me, and I hope it was for you too. You can go back to doing productive things with your life, but as for me, I might just cry myself back to sleep. Remember folks, the hypercrisis is real, and on that note, Piss off.